Hello everyone, I'm Nini FC, this is Blue Lions TV. Welcome to the match review of our nil-nil draw against West Ham. You guys, disappointing, but I do need to say immediately, West Ham were very, very good. We can't take that away from them. I thought that they've been the hardest team we've faced so far this season. I, they deserve the draw in the end, so that definitely can't be taken away. But of course, throughout this match, I've got some observations that I want to talk about, of course. Uh, Olivia Giroud and the striker situation. When it comes to playing against these very deep, low-block defensive teams, obviously talking about Kante, I want to talk about Willian. I want to talk about... You know, the struggles we face today in this game as well. Plus some other things. So make sure you stay tuned right to the end to get the full context of everything I'm talking about. But you guys, getting straight into things. Starting with uh, the team. Now, of course, it's the same team that we all expected. Giroud was playing up front over Morata. The bench was interesting though. Of course, no young players. Uh, no Christensen. Kale Moses took their places as well. Fabregas returned to the bench. And um, again, really, you looked at that bench, you were thinking... Who can provide something different if anything happened in this game? And I think as the game did go on, we really did pay witness to the fact that we didn't really have any options to change the course of the game, which is a bit disappointing. And I think maybe Sarr could have done some things differently, but I'm going to touch on that later on. With West Ham, their approach was the same as the one against Everton in terms of the same formation. Of course, their tactical approach was different. They were playing very defensively and my God, they made it difficult for us. I mean, the discipline was there. There's something that's not really associated with West Ham. They defend off the ball. But it was there as well. Very compact and congested in the middle. Declan Rice and Mark Noble were exceptional, I thought. Especially in terms of harrying, pressing, winning those second balls. And of course, really making it hard and closing down passing lanes and channels for guys like Kovacic and Hazard to operate in. So... They did their job, they played their part. I felt their wingers came back to drop deep and help out as well, which I wasn't expecting. I thought as the game goes on, they'd get less and less discipline when it comes to that fact of the game. And they were making it hard for us. Now, throughout this game, you guys know my match reviews. I'm not here to explain what happens minute by minute in the game. You know, you guys saw it yourself. You know, I'm sure you guys aren't blind to. You don't need me to repeat everything for you. I'm not here to give my thoughts and opinions on what I saw. I think one of the main things I want to talk about too was, uh, is uh, the striking situation. Now, again, you know, I agree with Sarah, which I found out after my five talking points video, but I agree with the fact that there's going to be certain contexts in which we use Giroud, Amarata, but end of the day, let's be serious, they're not top world-class strikers. They just are good strikers that can provide something different during moments of the game. I thought Giroud was non-existent today. I thought West Ham were very smart in how they dealt with him. Now, with Olivia Giroud, when you're using this guy up front, you're using him for his link-up abilities. And because it was effectively playing like 10 men, because Giroud was marked out of the game, I thought that uh, Buena for West Ham was very aggressive, very tight to him. Anytime Giroud was on the ball, Renner was spending all the second balls from him. Giroud was slow. He wasn't able to link up with anyone. He was isolated. And again, you kind of see the limitations in his game. Once Giroud stops doing the things he's good at, what else does this guy provide? You know, he doesn't really, uh, he doesn't stretch opposition defences. He doesn't run in those channels. He doesn't attack the spaces inside the box as well. He is very central. He is, uh, he does like to play in that central position. And, you know, we can struggle at times. We needed something different from the strike to really help the front three, I mean, the front two and Hazard and William to do something. And with Kovacic to link up as well. And Drew just wasn't able to provide anything up front for us to help in those matters. And it gets you thinking, you know, to play against these types of teams, do you even really need that traditional type of striker that can win aerial threats? I'm not too sure. You know, I was having a very good discussion with some friends yesterday in regards to how we can really develop the, our front three going forward. And it gets you thinking, if you can have someone that's able to drop deep and, and can play well, dropping deep, linking up with people, being a man, etc., etc., could that not add another dimension to our game? I think potentially it could, and it'd be interesting to see what could happen. And, you know, when you're hearing things about Sai wanting a new striker in January with different dimensions, a lot of times we're thinking about guys like Mitrovic. But again, he's a bit similar to Giroud in terms of the fact that he's a target man. Maybe we need someone more of a false nine who can provide something different. And maybe that's something that could really help elevate our front three because... It's not going to be the first time we'll play against teams that will defend like West Ham and play like this. And it was very difficult. As well now with Kante, it was interesting. You know, some of you guys might be thinking, why wasn't Olivia Giroud anywhere near for those chances where, you know, balls are being played in the in the box? 
and it makes a lot of sense as to why it wasn't the case. You have to think about it, you know, with Giroud, with Brainer man marking him out the game basically and already stopping his influence. You know, Giroud's really in the team to draw people away for guys like Pedro, Willi and Hazard to play in that space created by Giroud. And when Giroud's not able to do that, it really, it really just uh, stifles our attacking play in the final thirds. And this is why we kept seeing Kante in those areas where he was left unopposed and you could kind of see the limitations in that sense. You know, it's an interesting observation. You look at teams that play a similar style for Man City, you know, Man City, for example, with uh, De Bruyne and Silva and the other Silva as well, playing in that half space. And you can see they get better attacking efficiency in those areas because, you know, their players are more suited to that role. Now, I'm not saying let's give up on Kante. I'm not reactionary like that. Again, it's an observation I am making. But it does get, you know, it makes you think, you know, Kante... Is he going to take responsibility? Is he going to get you the goals in those areas when he has to? I'm not too sure. And then in an offensive capacity, it wasn't the greatest game from Kante. Now, you know, going to the second half, because I think with the first half, you know, we didn't really create too many chances. There was a, there was a lot of half chances created. We were tested on the counter-attack from West Ham. We know they're one of the most dangerous teams on the counter-attack. You know, Philippe Anderson causing Aspie issues and... You know, when you're seeing Aspie playing as a more traditional right back, not really playing as a third centre back or playing as a defensive left back, you know, he's always been playing with a lot of defensive support around him. He's looking a bit more human, you know. He always looked kind of superhuman in those areas. And when you're seeing getting beat sometimes, it's, I don't know, it makes you notice it because you don't really see Aspie Liquetta getting beaten at all. You guys, it's a bit of a sign up, but in the comment section below, give me your thoughts and opinions on Aspie being the new captain. Um, I've always seen Aspie as more of a soldier than a leader, which is interesting. Uh, I think maybe Luis or Hazard for me should have been captain, but in the comment section below, give me your thoughts and opinions. Do you think Aspie deserved the captaincy? But getting back to the game, and one thing for sure was that, and I was saying this in the match preview, thank God Arnautovic wasn't playing today. If Arnautovic is playing today, I think we could have lost this game. In terms of the context in which this game did play out, the guy is very clinical. He can score outside the box, inside the box, strong, fast. He would have caused us a lot of issues. So uh, thank God he wasn't playing because we wouldn't have won this game. But just talking about West Ham a bit more, you know, their defensive setup was very, very good. Um, Again, they really blocked those passing lanes. And I thought that... They were pretty different compared to other teams we played against that do defend in this manner. Other teams don't like to really press. They like to focus on keeping their shape. But I think West Ham are really using a lot of pressing traps. So what do I mean by that? You know, with pressing traps, it's like whenever, let's say, certain Chelsea players cross a certain line or get in certain positions, that's when the West Ham midfield players then start to press and try and harry the ball because West Ham tried to have a threat on the counter-attack. They weren't just looking to sit deep and park the bus and just soak up a lot of pressure. They were looking to stop those passing lanes. They were looking to stop us playing in the half spaces. And they were looking to press and close us in. You know, even though Jorginho clocked in the most uh, passes ever from a midfield player in Premier League history. Again, even though there were a few amazing forward passes he did play, he still lost the ball quite sloppily at times. And this brings me into my next point, And that's the fact that I felt personally we looked a bit tired. And I think it was down to the lack of rotation at times. I don't know, I think with Sarri, we know even though he's a fantastic attacking world-class manager, he's still Italian at heart, I feel. And what do I mean by that is, I'm not being rude, of course. I just mean that, you know, they all have certain preferences that they just prefer, you know. They are going to be a bit pragmatic at times with small things. And I think with Sarri, I think with his game management, could have been a bit better. I kept saying to the stream, you know, maybe Kante should have been subbed off for someone like Cesc Fabregas, who could have provided something playing in the half space. I felt that Sarri could have been a bit braver with that decision to try and get something for us there. I think in the last 20 minutes, was did you really need Kante there? I don't necessarily think so. With how West Ham were just caring about defending off the ball, their counter-attacking threat was getting weaker and weaker. They wanted to get that point. I don't really think Kante was needed. Maybe with Cesc, we could have got something better because, again, I felt from set pieces we were quite poor. We created quite a few, but I think with William today, I don't think William was as awful as people are saying in terms of his play, you know, just his overall play in the game. But one thing he was terrible in today was his set piece delivery. It was especially poor. I kept highlighting in the stream, you know, you know how Sari likes his team to set up with a lot, a lot of different tactics for set pieces. You know, you're seeing a lot of different codes. You're seeing uh, William have his hand in his head. 
his hands up, doing a lot of things to signify to the team what type of set piece they're going to do. And every single time, it was Williams' poor delivery, hitting the first man or hitting balls over the top, which was really affecting us from set pieces. And you were kind of thinking, for us to get something from this game, set pieces would have been vital. And of course, too, when you're playing against teams that do park the bus, William doesn't have a left foot. And we definitely did miss Pedro. And with Pedro, not only has his form being good, but it's the fact that the guy's ambidextrous. You know, he has a left foot and a right foot. He likes to play with his left foot when he's on the right, and that makes a big difference in terms of speeding up the play. But getting back to Sari, I think that he could have been more brave with the substitutions. Uh, it felt like he was going for players that he trusted more and instead of taking a rest to see who could have provided something different. You know, you've got someone like Moses on the bench. Let's say if that was Pedro, you, you know nine times out of 10, Sari's bringing on Pedro. Maybe he could have brought on Moses to provide something different. I personally think maybe Cesc have been playing alongside Kovacic, replacing Barkley for Kovacic. Even though Barkley was good, I was saying in the last match review, his confidence looked up. I thought his performance was good and he's looking more confident. And uh, yeah, let's see what Barkley can do in the future. Still, you guys, it was quite frustrating. We didn't create many chances, but, you know, the chances we did create, it was disappointing. I felt William was quite selfish at times. That opportunity at the end, he should have squared it to Morata. I'm sorry, inexcusable. Morata, he had that amazing chance. Again, it's quite unlucky. The guy only just came on the pitch, so he has to get a feel of the game first. And again, it was quite lucky in the sense that Fabianski basically didn't really save it. Really, the ball was blasted at his head. But it is interesting, you know, Sari rotation, Rudiger going off, which is a shame. Kale coming on, really Christensen should be that guy coming on in case anything happens to Rudiger. And I just feel maybe you could see that the performance was a bit laboured at times. I think especially with Jorginho at times, giving away some sloppy passes. And I think it was down to tiredness. Alonso as well. Some of the players just looked quite tired. And I'm thinking, sorry, I understand you want to keep the first team players playing to get used to your system, but don't, don't be too un inflexible you know be flexible certain times you know if you've got to use a Ruben or you've got to use a Zappa or whatever feel confident to use them that's not going to affect how the team are getting used to the system sometimes you need a rest you need a break and I think with this game today of course we didn't have things in our favor not getting that rest after the POK game didn't help us but I still think maybe in this game the manager could have done a bit more to help us but again we were always going to come up against a team like this eventually it was very hard and unfortunately we weren't able to get that win but you guys in the comment section below give me your thoughts and opinions on this game who stood out for you who was poor what should have been done differently in your opinion I really want to read it thank you guys for watching I'm Nini FC this is Blue Lions TV see you guys later